Just the Mad Hedge Fund Trader broadcasting you live from Silicon Valley in California, uh, center of the universe for all types of technology and artificial intelligence, as it turns out. Uh, to here, to get a good in artificial intelligence tip, all you have to do is wait in line at Starbucks, and that's what everybody's talking about all the time. So uh, let's get the show on the road here. Um, it is digestion time for those who are following the market on a daily basis. Uh, after an absolutely ballistic move from October and a record move in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, it is time to digest those gains. I'm looking for a sideways time correction, which could go on for a couple of months and then it's back to the races for another ballistic move into year end. And for those who don't know, uh, a digestif is a brandy which you have after lunch in Europe. Uh, will you make it back to work or not? I, I have no idea. So take out your pen and paper to take notes or start typing into your smartphone. What I'm about to tell you will blow you away and change your life. For I'm in the early retirement business, your early retirement. Why listen to John Thomas? Well, I have 55 years of experience in the global financial markets, 10 years as the economist corresponded in Tokyo and later the White House, 10 years running the International Equity Division at Morgan Stanley, uh, time out as a Marine Corps combat pilot in Desert Storm, 10 years running the first international dedicated hedge fund, five years fracking for natural gas in Texas, and 16 years now publishing the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader. I am one of a handful of founders of the modern hedge fund industry who is still breathing. Oh, the other re reason to uh, listen to me, 51.77% average annualized return for 16 years versus 23.64% for the S&P 500. Uh, we're running more than double the S&P 500. Uh, and... Uh, the last 12 years, that's been with the benefit of artificial intelligence. Of course, our secret weapon is the Mad Hedge Market Timing Index. Uh, today, we have a reading of 39, which means we're slightly in buy territory. Uh, we get any lower, we will be in very strong buy territory. Why do you need an algorithm? Well, why use a toolbox missing its most important tool? Algorithms have become so dominant in the market, you should never trade without one. It does the work of a seasoned 100-man research department in seconds. It runs real-time and optimizes returns with the addition of every new data point far faster than any human can. Imagine a trading strategy that upgrades itself a thousand times a day. Don't go to a gunfight with a knife. If you're trading against algos alone, you will lose. Algorithms provide you with a defined systematic trading discipline that will enhance your trading profits. Uh, this is three typical years of the profit predictor performance. You see at market bottoms, we tend to get a lot of buy signals. At tops, we get sell signals, buy, sell, buy, sell. It's like having a money printing machine. I'm not the only one using algorithms. Some 80 to 90% of all current trading is algorithmic driven. Uh, so this is 18 months of uh, Mad Hedge Market Timing Index indicators. You know, these update themselves uh, about a dozen times a day. And you can see down at uh, the under 30, we get very strong buy signals. Over 80, we get very uh, strong sell signals. And usually when we hit a low like this, we kind of bounce around the bottom for about a month before things take off. And you can see how we did here on October 26 uh, last year, things took off like a rocket and we delivered one of the biggest stock market gains in history. So using this kind of timing, this kind of discipline, this is a huge advantage for the individual trader working at home who is bombarded daily with often conflicting or inaccurate information. Believe me, I've been there, it's very painful. Uh, so there is a method to my madness a short-term top is in place for all risk assets, wherever the downside is limited to 5 to 8%, with $8 trillion in cash sitting on the sidelines and a further $26.8 trillion in short-term treasury bills out there. Technology stocks won't crash, just have a sideways time correction. 
all economic data is globally slowing, except for the U.S., which is looking for a soft landing. It has the only good economy in the world. Interest rates are higher for longer after a spate of high inflation numbers. Buy stocks and bonds, but only after substantial dips. Slowing economy and inflation mean that gold, silver, and commodities are about to take off like a rocket. Don't wait for the pullback in precious metals that isn't coming. So uh, we do a lot of work in options. You know, we send out about 200 trade alerts a year. Uh, every single one of those trade alerts gives you the choice for a stock trade, an ETF trade, or an options trade. And since so many people are interested in trading options these days, I thought you I'd give you our guide to how to pick a winning options trade. You have to know the macro picture. If you have a handle on whether the economy is growing or shrinking, you have a major advantage in the options market. In a growing economy, you only want to employ bullish strategies, such as calls, call spreads, and short volatility plays. In a shrinking economy, you want to execute bearish plays, such as puts, put spreads, and long volatility plays. Remember, the only thing that is useful is a view on the economy. What is going next? Uh, we're all inundated with what happened in the past. Unfortunately, all past data is already in the market and is useless. This isn't going to help you at all picking where the next move is. Government only publishes historic economic data, which is for the most part useless in predicting what will happen in the future. Uh, look for great industry fundamentals. Do you want to give yourself another edge? There are more than 100 different industries listed on U.S. stock markets. However, only about five or 10 are really growing decisively at any particular time. The rest are either going nowhere or are shrinking. In fact, you can find a handful of sectors that are booming while others are in outright recession. You are a major hedge fund institution or government. You may want to cover all 100 of those industries. Good luck with that. If you're a small hedge fund or an individual working from home, you'll want to conserve your time and resources skip most U.S. industries, and only focus on a handful. The micro picture is ideal. Once you have a handle on the economy and the best industries, it's time to zero in on the best companies to trade in or the micro selection. So it's great to find a good target to trade in because positions in a single company deliver double or triple the returns compared to stock indexes. That's because the market will pay a far higher implied volatility for a single company than a large basket of companies. Remember also that you are taking greater risk in trading individual companies. Uh, one single stock is subject to far greater event risk and a, than a basket, and therefore you should be rewarded for that with a greater return. If the earnings come through as expected, everything is hunky-dory. If they don't, the shares can drop by half in an Heartbeat. That's why sector selection is crucial, as well as the micro selection. Technicals line up is a good uh, advantage to have also. I've never been a huge fan of technical analysis. Most technical analysis boils down to if it's gone up, it'll go up more, or if it's gone down, it'll go down more. Over time, the recommendations are accurate 50% of the time or about equal to a coin toss. However, the shorter the time frame, the more useful technical analysis becomes. If you, if you analyze intraday trading, almost all very short-term movements can be explained in technical terms. This is entirely how day traders make their livings. It's a classic case of enough people believe something, it becomes true, no matter how dubious the underlying facts may be. So it does behoove us to pay some attention to the charts when executing your trades. The calendar is favorable. There is one more means of assuring your trades turn into winners. According to data in the Stock Tra Traders Almanac, $10,000 invested uh, at the beginning of May every year and sold at the end of October every year since 1950 would be showing a loss today. Amazingly, $10,000 invested every November 1st and sold at the end of every April today would be worth $702,000, giving you a compound annual return of 7.1%. Of the 74 years under study, the market was down in 25 May, October periods, but negative in only 13 of the November, April periods, and down only three times in the past 20 years. 
and this year will be no different. There have been just four times when the good six months have lost more than 10%, and that is in 1969, 73, 08, and in 2020. But with the bad six months, the time period, there have been 11 losing efforts of 10% or more. So let me do the heavy lifting for you. You can spend 12 hours a day, seven days a week, slaving in front of a computer, making sure all five of these criteria land, line up. Or you can let the mad hedge fund trader do the heavy lifting for you and just spend five minutes a day reading our trade alerts. Adopt these five simple disciplines and you will find your success rate on trades jumps from a coin toss to 70%, 80%, or even 90%. In other words, you convert your trading from an endless series of frustrations to a reliable source of income. If a potential trade meets only four or five of these criteria, please do it with your money and not mine. Your chances of making money have just declined. And I bet a lot of you poor souls out there execute trades all the time that meet none of these criteria. Heavens to Betsy. Stock selection accounts for 90% of all stock market uh, performance. Sector selection is. Pick the right sectors. You can easily outperform the market. You can also make money in any market conditions where the market's going up or down. Pick the wrong sectors. You can lose money even in a prolonged bull market. Let a 55-year market veteran pick the sectors and the timing for you. So our top sector for investing this moment is precious metals. Uh, and historically, precious metals rise on geopolitical fears. There are a lot more factors coming into the market now that we've never seen before. Gold is hanging on to all-time highs, up 34.25% since October. Central bank buying is accelerating, especially from China. Gold is also being dragged up by a global commodities boom. Traditional demand for gold has been absent until now. ETF and jewelry demand actually fell in 2023. Their return will take gold up to $3,000 sometime in 2025. Silver is also starting to outperform. And the new factor in the market is the Chinese individual. Until recently, they made all their money speculating in the housing market in China. Well, guess what? That market has absolutely crashed with home prices down 50, 60, 70%. And it's driven out all the speculators. Where have they gone to? The gold market. Chinese are soaking up gold in every market all over the world at the same time. And boy, does that have one hell of an impact on prices. That's where your 34% gain six October came from. And that's where the next 34% will come from as well. And then you have the traditional sources of demand kicking in. So this looks like a very bullish market. Uh, here's the GLD. That's the easiest way to trade gold. Um, and you can trade options, futures, virtually every kind of instrument out there uh, if you want to. Trades like water has a one penny spread. I've seen customers put in million dollar orders uh, at market and only move the market by a penny. So by the GLD on dips, we're looking for a 20% return from here by 2025. Uh, you like gold, you'll love Barrick Gold, the world's largest gold miner. Uh, we are looking for a uh, increase to $40 a share uh, this year or next year. And that is 160% gain from the current level. And uh, if you like gold, silver does even better. It usually has a beta twice that of gold. Uh, and we see silver moving up from uh, the current level of $23 to uh, uh, $50 by sometime next year. That's a gain of 150%. Turns out you need silver to make EVs electronics, solar panels, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, actual production has been flat for the last 10 years with production in silver hitting a 10 year low last year at uh, 23,000 metric tons. So rising demand, falling supply, sounds like a great bull market to me. Uh, stocks have been a big tech game for the last six months and it's all about the data. Uh, big tech crashed and is now holding its own, moving sideways with the Magnificent Seven breaking 
50-day moving averages across the board. Meta crashed 15% in one day, sparking a sell-off in big tech stocks after the social media giant signal its costly bet on AI would take years to pay off. Patience is the last word in the world investors want to hear. They want to make profits right now. The volatility index had a six-month high at 22 on threats of a new Iran war, oil supply cutoffs, and topping stocks. Next stops are the 200-day moving averages, which are far, far away and rising rapidly. This gives rise to my sideways time correction theory. If those hold, this is just a correction. If the 200 days all fold, then the bear market is back. I don't believe it, but you can't rule out anything in this crazy world. Short sellers pocketed record profits last week on the technology crash and volatility explosion, raking in $10 billion in profits. NVIDIA shorts alone accounted for $3 billion of this. And airlines are making contingency plans for new aircraft uh, since Boeing is unable to supply the planes they need. Even Boeing is having to lease Airbuses to meet its order demand. So what's in the market and what's out, the, out of the market? This is something you have to ask yourself every day of the year. Uh, if it's already in the market, we can't trade off of it. If it's not in the market, but it's coming, you can trade off of that. And that's where the big money is made. So what's in the market already? Well, high inflation, an oil shock, a labor shortage, supply chain headaches, Fed interest rate rises, quantitative tightening, and poor earnings. What's next for the market? Well, cheaper gasoline prices, rising commodity prices, a stabilizing supply chain, record low 3.9% unemployment, better than expected earnings, 1.2 trillion in stock buybacks, falling interest rates, and a weak dollar. So those are the items you should trade around in the coming year. So there is a trader's dilemma right now. The choice is between five stocks that have gone up in a straight line for six months or a dozen interest rate sensitive sectors that may be dead money for months until the Fed actually cuts interest rates. Avoid the frustration trade, the chase you should have done on October 26, but never, never really quite got around to. Wait for an ideal AI entry point, no matter how long it takes. The AI is bigger than the internet, and I was around when they launched the internet, and even that was unbelievable. Uh, if, if we were sitting around 25 years ago and talked about uh, how big the economy uh, and the internet are intertwined today, they would have said, you're nuts. What? Take an Uber ride? Use Hotels.com to plan your vacation? Book your flights on Travelocity? This all would have been considered magic 25 years ago, but often new technologies are to do take on the characteristics of magic. Big chunk of 2024 performance was pulled forward into 2023, and you've already made that money. The sole exception is energy, which is driven by demand from the Chinese economy, which has been weak. With markets at all-time highs, 90-day teal bills are still yielding 5.25%. So we run barbelled portfolios. Those are 75% and 25% of uh, 75, 20, 75 big tech and 25% domestic recovery. Big tech accounts for 2% of the US workforce, 25% of the market cap. That's now 30%, and a staggering 25% of US earnings. And the domestic recovery stocks account for the rest. And those are railroads, airlines, cruise lines couriers, steel companies, banks, commodities, construction, credit card companies, hotels, casinos, and online ticket sales. I'll, I'll start with NASDAQ. We've already had a tremendous run here from 12,500 to 16.5. That's a 35% gain. We're looking for NASDAQ to reach 20,000 by the end of 2024, a gain of 22%. Uh, Microsoft is one of our favorites. It's already had a great run, and we're looking for Microsoft to hit $500 a share uh, by the end of the year. Uh, Microsoft is an AI leader with the ownership of ChatGPT. They know every keystroke 
you ever made since you bought your first computer 30 years ago. Imagine what that data is worth. The value is absolutely immense. Uh, Meta is another leader. Its profits tripled on improving sales and massive cost cutting. Uh, Meta knows every social media post you've made for the last 20 years. You think that's worth a lot of money. Well, the stock market thinks so. That's why the stock more than doubled in a year. And we're targeting $700 a share by the end of the year. Uh, Amazon knows everything you bought or even just thought about buying for the last 25 years. Uh, so, of course, they are an AI leader, uh, a, 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 have a huge amount of data, and all of that is being monetized. Uh, we see a minimum target of $200 by the end of the year for Amazon and possibly a lot higher. And by the way, you see these blue boxes here. Those are where our market timing indexes put out buy signals on each individual stock. And boy, have they been right. Uh, NVIDIA has a global monopoly on top-end AI graphics cards. Their sales probably will triple from here. Our target uh, for the end of the year or next year is $1,400 a share. That is up from the original $15 that we paid uh, nearly 10 years ago for this stock. Uh, Alphabet knows everything you've searched for or even thought about searching for the last 20 years. And they just inhibited initiated dividend payments for the first time in their history, can share back buybacks be far behind? We're looking for at least $200 a share in Google or Alphabet. Salesforce runs the custom data bases for most of the Fortune 500 and has dozens, if not hundreds, of data points about you personally. We're targeting 400 for Salesforce, and again, it's all about the data. Palo Alto Networks, uh, we love long-term because hacking never goes out of style and three companies have a near monopoly in the service and cus big customers have to buy all three of them. We're targeting 400 uh, a share for Palo Alto Networks. So the second half of the barbell bets on falling interest rates and a global economic recovery to begin this year. Upside potential for recovery stocks is greater than it is for, for tech. Some of these stocks have not moved for five or 10 years. Focuses on economically sensitive cyclical industries, makes a great counterweight to a high growth technology portfolio. We could spend years rotating back and forth between the two groups. Of course, JP Morgan, the quality bank in the United States, love uh, recovering economies, falling default rates, falling interest rates are hugely overcapitalized and they're moving into online banking and shutting down their expensive expensive branch networks to cut costs. So uh, we've been in Morgan since the October lows. Uh, have had a massive gain since then. And we see another $250 for JPM by the end of the year. Uh, Visa is the touch, touchless payment plan. They're catching the growth of exploding online commerce. 15% of credit card charges these days are for, for travel charges and we're looking for a record travel uh, summer coming up. Uh, our target for Visa is $400 by the end of this year. Uh, Union Pacific, in any recovery, you need, need to move a lot of big stuff. Union Pacific is the main east-west route, moves oil and food to China and electronics and clothes back. It's not your father's railroad, it really is a high-tech company now. Uh, we're looking for 350 a share for Union Pacific by the end of the year. Federal Express, you also have to move a lot of small stuff overnight. There's been a massive increase in overnight deliveries uh, and uh, that is also a good play on the domestic economy. Uh, Federal Express, oops. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, one of our long-term favorites. That's the one-stop barbell portfolio. Uh, they have very heavy exposure to financials and Apple, where they are the largest outside owner. Uh, Apple is Bar Berkshire's largest single position, uh, and they are huge buyers of their own stock. Uh, so uh, they bought 25 billion worth of stock last year, and will keep buying every dip in 2024. Did I mention they have $200 billion worth of cash on hand? 
Okay, so let's move on to another asset cl class, bonds. Probably no rate cuts uh, this year, but uh, that is what the market is discounting after the low inflation number uh, that we got on Friday uh, or the low jobs number. Uh, we may end up getting one or two after all. The biggest treasury bill auction in history last week was a huge success with the government pumping out 60, $69 billion worth of debt, uh, getting a 4.898% yield. That's almost a risk-free government guaranteed return of 10% for two years. Now the 70 billion of five-year notes will sold the next day. Half of this is going to foreign investors and central banks. Faith in America and the US dollar remains strong. Who else's bonds would you rather buy? China's, Russia's, Europe's? Passage of the Ukraine bill probably was a help in shifting such a large amount of U.S. government debt. Slowing economy inflation rate will give all interest rate plays a major push. September is now looking at the earliest possible rate cut. So the way to play uh, interest rates, the best way is the TLT. Just had a four-point rally, looking for another dip from here. And then after that, we're looking for 110 uh by the end of the year and again you can trade the etf the options and so on uh current yield on the 10 year 4.46 percent uh, we see that dropping substantially from here by the end of the year probably to 3.5 percent so that takes interest rates from this high level here we actually got up to 475 a couple weeks ago we're looking at 350 uh by 2025 Foreign currencies, uh, the yen has had a 40-year low, but don't rush to buy it. Uh, you know, Japanese yen collapsed to 160. Bank of Japan intervened with the 35 billion worth of uh, yen buying and dollar selling. Had no effect. Avoid the FXY. Chinese yuan remains weak as their international trade is collapsing. Turns out nobody wants to do business with a warmonger. Declining experts, collapsing foreign investment, minimal population growth, it all adds up to a weaker Chinese currency. Higher for longer means higher for longer for the US dollar. You need falling interest rates and uh, to guarantee to, uh, a falling dollar and that won't happen towards the end of the year. So we're looking to buy the Australian dollar. This is our favorite play. We think it can rise from a current uh, 65 to one to one to the US dollar. And of course, we've been buying it since the October low back here at 62. Uh, Japanese yen and free fall, I don't want to touch, uh, but it's am amusing to watch from a distance. Euro uh, stabilized right around here, waiting for the US to cut rates. And when it does, we're looking for a 25% gain there. Uh, energy and commodities are another area worth buying right here if you're looking to diversify out of technology. Uh, oil and gas M&A hit a record in Q1, hinting that the new bull market in oil may extend. U.S. oil and gas deals hit a record $51 billion in the first quarter. BHP uh, made a record $39 billion bid for Agnaco Eagle to create the world's largest copper producer. Uh, and then Biden, uh, boosted the cost of Alaskan oil drilling leases from 10,000 to 160,000, the first such increase since 1960. Uh, the U.S. is currently the largest oil exporting country in the world at 13 million barrels a day, uh, and that is increasing. So you want to buy ExxonMobil and Occidental Petroleum on dips. And by the way, Warren Buffett likes Occidental also. He owns about 25% of the company right now. So oil, uh, after this great run-up since uh, December, we're now looking at a sell-off uh, as the uh, Chinese economy fails to recover. They're the world's largest buyer uh, of oil. Uh, but still, we see another a bounce and oil eventually hitting 95 a barrel this year. Uh, but for the long term, oil is having a going out of business sale. And it may take 20 or 30 years but we think of oil will eventually get replaced by alternative energy, uh, in which case 
it uh, drops to its petrochemical value, which is about $10 a barrel. Uh, and we have seen $10 a barrel recently. We saw it at the pandemic low. Uh, actually bought uh, oil at, in the futures market at negative five. And I, I got stopped out. It went all the way down to negative 37. So that's how low oil can go when there are zero buyers. So don't play with matches. You could probably do okay just buying all the stocks I mentioned above and forgetting about them. Uh, however, the reality is that conditions for these companies change every day. They are all viciously competing, trying to put each other out of business. If you don't get daily updates on the fundamentals, you could easily get wiped out. Today's big winner could instantly become tomorrow's loser. That's why you need someone like me to guide you through an out of the blow thick up. I gained financial independence for life, and so can you. All of this can be yours. Discover how to make $1,000 a year in extra income. Go from complete beginner to seasoned pro in weeks. Learn how to quit your day job and trade for a living full time. And we have a lot of customers doing that. Trade from anywhere, anytime. If I told you some of the places I traded from, you wouldn't believe it. In this picture, I'm sending out a trade alert from the coast of North Africa and trying as hard as I can to smile because it is 120 degrees. Uh, supplement your retirement income with the satisfaction of booking winning trades by the hundreds. The harsh truth is you really need my help. The majority of individual traders lose money. They lack the correct training and discipline to succeed. Most broker research suffers from grievous conflicts of interest. Wall Street is all about moving money from the uneducated to the educated. The easy solution to that problem is to get educated. Fidelity did a 20-year study and learned their top performing investors were dead people. Why did dead people do so well? They never sell. Not bad when the market goes up 80% of the time. Uh, you need a real pro to guard you through the market maze. The market is not monolithic and 95% of it can be completely ignored. There are a few great sectors, and a lot of awful ones. You can earn a 10 times return on the great sectors, get wiped out by the losers. Let a 55 year veteran steer you to safe waters. Let me, let me sit next to you and guide your hand on every winning trade. Uh, okay. Uh, so here's our 16-year uh, performance, 51.77% average annualized return. And I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to some of our existing customers. Richard made millions rig religiously following my trade alerts. He now spends his retirement restoring vintage aircraft and flying them over the California coast. Sometimes he lets me fly them. Greg turned $100,000 in the three million solely on my trade alerts. He bought a new home in Orange County, California with Tesla power, solar panels, Tesla power walls, and a Tesla Model 3 and still had enough money to send three kids to college. And uh, here's another uh, seasoned Mad Hedge customer. Oops, oops, let's get that going. It's Bob, I live near Denver, Colorado, and I'm hiking on top of the Continental Divide. Nine months ago, I joined John's Global Dispatch Service and was so impressed with the profits I made. But two weeks ago, while hiking in the Dolomites, I joined his concierge service. And in two weeks, it is 100% paid for it, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Life is good. John really helps. The other day, I had a text message exchange with him regarding some concerns I had with TLT. Uh, put spreads. He encouraged me to stay in. I did, and today they went out at 95% of maximum po potential profits. And that's the way it works for me. I hope you all do well trading yourselves. Thank you. All right, let's uh, try to get this. There we go. Okay, so what do we do about all this? Well, stocks, you want to buy the next big dip. Bonds, you want to buy dips. Commodities, buy dips. Energy, buy dips. Currency, buy dips in foreign currencies and, and sell the U.S. dollar. Precious metals, buy dips. If you're not up 51.77% 
in the past 12 months as I was, you were reading the wrong newsletter or following the wrong trade alert service. Uh, you get those kind of numbers. Uh, you get to do things other people don't do, like take the Queen Mary from New York to England. When you get to England, you can then take the Orient Express to Venice. And once in Venice, you can then island hop with your own private helicopter. And here's the very long-term view. This is where the big money will be made. The, 2020, the 2000s and the 2010s were the hard decades for making money. The 2020s and the 2030s will be the easy ones as a global demographic wave brings on a new golden age. 85 million millennials will become big spenders over the next 15 years, while 80 million baby boomers, a drag on the economy because they save so much, fade from the scene. That will create an economic boom that will last another decade and started in 2023. The last time we had identical demographic conditions as we do now, the Dow average went up 20 times in 18 years. Are you ready for a replay? If you remember, if, there, if you people were around then, uh, the Dow was at 600, 1982. It went up to 12,000 by the year 2000. Uh, well, this is the identical replay is rolling out now. If we get a 20 times return from the 2009 bottom uh, over 18 years, that takes us to 120,000 by 2030. And if you think I'm crazy, we're already two thirds of the way there. Uh, we've already made the move up to 39,000. Uh, one more triple gets us to nearly 120,000. So uh, uh, looking for history to repeat itself. Except this time it's different. We now have the AI technology turbocharger. Technology is hyper accelerating on all fronts simultaneously and the pandemic greatly sped up the rate of change. The development of function quantum computers will mean that computational ability is about to increase a trillion fold at no cost. The world's major computational challenges will shortly be solved, such as weather forecasting and cancer cures. All major human diseases will be cured within 10 years. Live another decade and you'll have a shot at living to 150. Needless to say, barbell stocks dominate in this scenario and will account for the bulk of stock market gains in our lifetimes. The 90s had cheaper computers, cheap operating software, and a new internet. The 2020s will have 10 times this number of new technology drivers. So he'll show you how to play the next 90,000 Dow points. Sit with me, John Thomas, the Mad Hedge Fund Trader, and my Global Trading Dispatch. Discover how you can tap into the top performing trade mentoring service in the industry, up 51.77% a year. Follow my research and market beating trailers and you will rake the profits in. Let a Marine combat pilot steer you to big profits. We trade single stocks, options, and ETFs for global equities, bonds, foreign exchange, energy, commodities, precious metals, and real estate. And let's see if we have any question in. Da, 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 da. Okay, get your questions in. I'll address them at the close when I know how much time I have left. And by the way, um, that's not the plane I flew in Desert Storm. Uh, that's a 1932 de Havilland Tiger Moth. Uh, note the design flaws. Gas tank directly over your head. In a plane, it tends to flip over a lot and no brakes. That's why we can only land on grass fields. Uh, this is a typical trading history for us in one month using our market timing index. We bought the S&P 500, made a 16.3% profit, sold short U.S. Treasuries, made 8.6%, bought the Russell 2000, made 14.8%, bought Amazon, made 12.1%, bought Apple, made 7.6%, uh, bought Biogen, lost 21.3%. We tend to stop out of losers very quickly. It's easier to dig yourself uh, out of a small hole than a big one. And as you can see, the rest of our trades for the month were profitable.
It's just a matter of time before barbell stocks break out to new all-time highs. Watch this space melt up for the rest of 2024. Get ready to start reeling in those whoppers with Global Trading Dispatch as your guide. And yes, that is a 24-inch rainbow trout, which I caught in northern Nevada. And here's how our service works. Uh, at one point, our algorithm predicted an upside breakout in NVIDIA back when it was at... Uh, 522. So what did we do? We sent out a trade alert. And a trade alert looks like this. Buy NVIDIA at 480 or best. Uh, it's an opening trade. That shows the trade date. Uh, we suggest you put 10% of your trading portfolio in there. That equated to 21 shares. What happened? Well, uh, NVIDIA rose 45% in 22 trading days. Did we just sit around and pat ourselves on the back? No, we sent out a sell alert. Uh, and that's what the sell alert takes like, looks like. Take profits. Sell NVIDIA at 695 or best. It's a closing trade. There's the trade date. Uh, number of shares uh, at 21. We made $4,515 on a $10,000 investment in just a few weeks. So we have a long history of uh, Mad Hedge 10 baggers since we've been at this for such a long time. Uh, Zoom, we got a 10 times return getting in there uh, right before the pandemic started. What well, was that convenient? Lamb Research, the semiconductor equipment maker, we got a 10.6 return. NVIDIA, uh, we got a, an 18 times return from our, from our initial entry point. Square, we got a 25 times return. Moderna, we got a 40 times return, which we also got into just before the pandemic because we like their RNA technology. Uh, and Tesla, the grandfather of them all, uh, our average cost was $2.35. It went up 178 times from that. Do their global EV dominance, autonomous driving, solar panels, uh, and a uh, and uh, their uh, satellite Wi-Fi. So with my Mad Hedge Global Trading Dispatch, you get instant trade alerts and out of market sweet spots, about 200 a year, and all of the reasons and deep research on why you should execute them. Live bi-weekly strategy webinars with an interactive Q&A, special reports on urgent investment topics, invitations to strategy luncheons around the world, more educational videos and webinars than you can consume in a lifetime, access to a 16-year database on investment ideas searchable by names and ticker symbols. And I'll even tell you the name of a cool surfing school in, in North Africa. Uh, watch out, though. It's a lot harder than it looks. This is the one-stop shop. Learn all you need for every level. It's for individuals who want to understand what is happening with their retirement funds. It's for people who want to learn how to trade for a living, get the financial education of a lifetime. It's for smaller institutions and financial advisors who can't afford an in-house research department. Get in before the next melt-up begins. With our service, you get my uh, global market comments in your inbox every morning before the market uh, uh, opens. You also get Mad Hedge Hot Tips, the five most important things that happened today and what to, to do about them. This is what I'm not going to charge you uh, for the service. I'm not, not going to charge you $100,000. That's what I charge my hedge fund clients, and they're happy to pay because I make them millions of dollars. Uh, and I'm not going to charge you $12,000. That's what I charge my concierge clients to get my personal cell phone number so I can be their investment 911. And I'm not going to charge you $3,500 for this service. That's the full price of what I'm offering you today on my website. This is the real deal. Creating this product cost me millions of dollars with the best customer service in the industry running it costs millions more. Uh, today, only through this webinar, you can get a six-month subscription for just $997. That is a 71.5% discount to the website price. This is a limited time offer. I only can take 25 new subscribers at a time, 
so it's first come, first serve. I can't wait to make you a top drawer trader. Just click on the chat box on the right. That'll take you to a dedicated uh, sales page, uh, which is only available today. Let me make the money for you to pay for your subscription. You make the trades. Discover how an experienced hedge fund manager finds and exploits the best sweet spots in any market. Just click on the chat box on the right. And David just put the link in there, and there it is, uh, www.madhedgefundtrader.com. That takes you to the sales page. Uh, here's the offer you just you can't refuse. Buy now, and you will instantly receive a trade alert with an extremely high probability of success. You can execute immediately since the market is open and make some of the most serious money in your life. Don't leave good money on the table. 95% uh, of these trade alerts make money immediately. Uh, and just to give you a tease, this is the chart of the trade alert I am about to send you, uh, which will land in your inbox seconds when you complete the purchase. Uh, you have to go through a thousand charts this good to find one. Uh, let me do the heavy lifting for you. What I'm not going to tell you is this, this is a buy or a sell. For that, you have to read the research and understand what's really happening underneath. So who is John Thomas? Well, if you're going to work with me for the next six months, it's best to find out who I really am. Uh, my family origins are very humble. Growing up as the oldest of seven children in a remote farm in Southern California. I lived the all-American childhood playing Little League Baseball and becoming an Eagle Scout. I, there wasn't much to do in rural California in the old days but hunting, so I picked up a job as a paper boy for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. There I found the stock pages, bought IBM at 20, sold it at 30, suddenly found a far better way to make money than delivering newspapers off a bicycle. By the time I was 16, I earned enough money to fly to Europe. By the age of 17, I had visited more than 50 countries and spoke four languages. At UCLA, I majored in math and DNA research, which landed me a job at the nuclear test site in Nevada. Their yield didn't mean interest paid, but millions of Russians killed. I didn't see much of a future in that, so the government sent me to Southeast Asia for a few years of intelligence mission, where I learned to fly out and jump out of perfectly good airplanes. There I advised the military of America's Asian allies. As the war wound down, I became a foreign correspondent for The Economist magazine in London. When they learned I had a math degree, they switched me over to covering the Asian economy and the stock market. And all I got for my uh, years of government service was this box of medals, which you veterans out there will recognize. Uh, and I trot them out once a year on Veterans Day. As a foreign correspondent, I covered China during the Cultural Revolution, was the first American reporter to visit North Korea since the Korean War, and covered the rest of the continent all the way to India. I quickly figured out you didn't have to be that smart to make money in the stock market, so I got in the industry joining Morgan Stanley. After 10 years there, I started my own hedge fund. And there's my original ID card from 1983. Yes, the years have been cruel. I rapidly became the top performing hedge fund of the 1990s, eventually bringing in a 1,000% return in a decade. Then the money really started to pour in. It's an understatement to say that when your income goes from the thousands to the millions, it really has a big impact on your lifestyle. You got to collect the latest hot car, fly your own private plane around Europe, go marlin fishing in Mexico, and collect vintage Rolls Royces. I now spend my days pursuing my first love, finding winning trade alerts. But now I do it for my three mansions in San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, and Zermatt, Switzerland. And I've quit turning millionaires into billionaires. There is far more satisfaction playing, at leveling the playing field for the average guy and teaching him how to trade. And that includes you. If I can take a $50,000 account and turn it into 500000 that is more job satisfaction than I could find anywhere. In the little free time I have left, I pursue my other love, flying vintage aircraft on weekends. 
If you find a, see an old plane flying loops over San Francisco or London these days, it's probably me. The ultimate luxury, of course, is to give those who need it. As a Marine Corps veteran, I volunteer for grief counseling for widows and orphans, and I'm a major donor to wounded warriors. When the wildfires hit California, I visited the main evacuation centers and handed out $10,000 worth of Target gift cards. So when you uh, make millions of dollars for your clients, you get a lot of pretty interesting invitations. $5,000 cases of wine, lunches on super yachts, free tickets to the Olympics, and dates with movie stars. So it was in that spirit that I traveled to the famed World War II fighter station at Biggin Hill in England to meet Mad Hedge Concierge member Peter Monk. Peter was a poorly paid pilot for Ryanair when he first signed up for my global trading dispatch. After doubling his money in the first year, Peter upgraded to my concierge service. Then the money really started to pour in. Peter plowed his mad hedge profits into restoring a 1940 Battle of Britain veteran, a supermarine Spitfire Mark IX, in his backyard, begging, borrowing, and trading parts from all over the world. He eventually built his fleet up to 16 flying aircraft, which are today, today worth over $65 million. When Peter invited me to fly one, I jumped at the chance. It was a mild and blustery day when we took off and headed for the English Channel. Even though the plane was 82 years old, we managed a brisk 250 miles an hour over the countryside. The Spitfire could outmaneuver any plane the German Air Force threw up against it. This particular plane is credited with shooting down two Messerschmitt BF-109s, and it's easy to see how. We found a clear piece of sky over the White Cliffs of Dover between two big fluffy cumulus clouds and commenced a full-on aerobatic flight test. Pilots always want to see what I can do with these old planes, and this time was no different. I executed multiple loops, barrel rolls, chandelles, lazy eights, Immelman turns, and wing overs, careful never to exceed the 1G limitation or the wings might fall off. Fall off. Spitfires can dive like crazy. We dropped from 8,000 to 2,000 feet in seconds. Then it was back to Biggin Hill for a perfect three-point landing and a pint of beer at the local pub. Let me make millions of dollars for you as well as I have done thousands of other followers over the last 14 years. I look forward to working with all of you. And let's see, let's get to the happy, uh, to the, to the, the safe landing. Okay, I'm going to check my inbox, see if uh, any of you um, uh, have expressed interest in our offers today. And uh, I'll check the questions here. Uh, and one person very kindly says, you have quite the impressive resume and personal history. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, reading through that. Uh, Okay, here's a good question. You say buy the dip, that's fine. What happens when there are multiple dips? Uh, how, how do we know which dip to buy into? Answer, nobody knows. So you scale. Uh, let's say you um, have 10% uh, of your portfolio to allocate to a single stock. Uh, carve it up into five 2% bits. Every dip you buy, uh, you keep buying those 2% dips. And then... Uh, if you finally get a breakout, then you keep buying on the upside. That's how professional traders do it. Uh, that's what works. That's what I've been doing for a few years. Uh, somebody else says, looks like there are a few contradictory statements there. Well, welcome to the stock market. There are contradictory stuff going on every day. Uh, and sometimes you have to just have to wait and see which um, is the true state of affairs with the economy earnings and so on. Okay, so here's the offer you can't refuse. Uh, six months for just $997. And just let me check my store. It looks like uh, we, we're gonna hit our 25 limitation here pretty quickly. We have Adam from Durham, South Carolina just came in to buy. Uh, we have John 
from Douglas, Georgia. Thank you very much, George. Check your inbox, get that trade alert. You have only five more minutes to execute the trade, but don't worry. I'm sure you'll get another opportunity tomorrow morning. Frank from Columbus, Iowa. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, check your inbox for that trade alert and read it. I did a lot of research on that trade alert and you'll learn a lot of new stuff which you don't know. Uh, I didn't know it until I did the research. Michael Corpus Christi, Texas. Thank you very much, Michael. Look forward to working with you over the next six months. Uh, okay, let's see if we have any more questions. Ooh, lots of questions. Okay, I'm gonna run out my last five minutes here with questions. Um, okay, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Warren Buffett just sold 13% of his Apple stake. He absolutely did. And other people like uh, Paul Tudor Jones uh, are also selling their stakes. And guess what? I'm short Apple. I bought the one, uh, the uh, 200, 210 put spread last week, and that's looking pretty good right now. So, uh, uh, you know, there are long and short opportunities every day of the year. We give you lots and lots of opportunities for both of these. Okay, lots of thanks here. Uh, okay, and um, let's see, reading that, reading that. Uh, okay, let me uh, go back to the store. We just had a Ian from Cambridge, England come in. Thank you very much. And uh, Ian, I'll see you this summer when I do my annual London luncheon in downtown London. I'll look forward to that. Okay, uh, we have Peter from Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, Peter, great cooking down there for sure. I love the uh, the gumbo you have in Louisiana. Uh, and I can probably give you a few restaurant recommendations for New Orleans. Uh, Karen from Cody, Wyoming came in. Thank you very much, Karen. Check your inbox for the trade alert. And if you can't get the order in today, get it in first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm expecting a major move pretty soon. Let's see. Uh, 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 okay. And then we also have Wilson from Enterprise, uh, Mississippi. Thank you very much, Wilson. Promise to work hard for your money. Uh, okay. So, uh, David, we're just about out of time here. Um you have anything to contribute? Any questions on your side? Hello, David. Earth to David. Okay. Uh, hey, there uh, you go. Sorry. Um, I... Okay, I just got another question in. Um, uh, can basic beginners benefit from your service? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, with students from dorm rooms uh, trading, uh, you know, with small accounts, because guess what? A lot of colleges are closed these days and they don't have anything to do. So, uh, uh, and a lot of these beginner traders actually have the trading gene and end up doing better than I do at this. So yes, yeah, some people have the knack, they're born with the trader gene and they're very profitable. And what better time uh, to be become a stock market expert than when you're in your early 20s and have another 60, 70 or 80 years to use it. Invest in yourself and you will benefit from the profit. That's what I always tell kids. Uh, okay, it's like teaching a person how to fish. Okay, uh, Okay. let's look for another question here. Um, uh, what is your sex is success ratio on trade alerts? That is an excellent question. Uh, for the last three years, we've averaged 90% a year. Uh, this year, we're slightly down from 90%. Uh, because we've had a lot of volatility and very little net movement in a lot of these stocks. So uh, we tend to stop out of losers very quickly. 
I'd rather dig myself out of a small hole than a big one. Okay, uh, let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, David, have you got your next speaker lined up?